Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Today's video we're talking about some of the most overpriced bags I see out there on the market and why I don't think some of them are necessarily the best buys. Uh, I am going to follow up and uh, leave some alternatives at lower prices uh, throughout the video as well as down below in the, in the comment section so be sure to check those out. You know I love a good look for less. So if you're new here, hello, my name is Catherine. Um, I work in the luxury resale industry on the ground. I've been in the business for almost coming up on 10 years now, and um, I actually deal with buyers and sellers on a day-to-day -day basis. Here on this channel, I give tips and tricks and insights into uh, some of the finer points on the luxury resale market, uh, the things that they don't tell you, and how the market actually moves in real life. So if you would like to know more of that, then be sure to hit the subscribe button. I do new videos every week. So we're going to start off with a very popular one from the like back end of last year into this year, 2023. It puts such a bee in my bonnet. I hate this bag. The YSL Ikare. Is that how you pronounce it? Is it Ikare? I've seen I care Ikare. Uh, if you actually know, comment it down below. I'm not entirely sure. So if you have been around here for a while, you know that trends and influencer pushes are just not my jam. You know, that's just not my cup of tea and that's just what it is. But when I saw that this bag was like $5,000, absolutely not. So outside of the aesthetical and design things that I am naturally biased against, which we are setting aside for right now. So YSL is a brand that I adore. I think that their designs are classic and timeless and um, just really easy to wear, I feel like. Um, one of the things that I also really like about the brand is that so they have the notoriety and the big name and everything, but the price point is something that is still obviously very, very expensive, but I feel like it's something that is more realistic for a, we'll call it like a more casual purveyor of luxury goods. What's great about the YSL bags is that they are so classic and they are not like completely like weird and chaotic like Bottega and Balenciaga and, and the like. For the most part, you can find something great under $3,000. I guess that we are running out of time uh, for that to continue to be the case. Now, another really important point to make about this bag is that I said this a couple of videos back and I don't see big bags actually coming back like with a full force. People just don't tend to carry as much as they used to. Um, we were trending down towards smaller bags and I think that that's just going to be how it is um, for the foreseeable future. Not a trend cycle, not a season, like going forward. As time goes by, we're carrying less and less things, so I don't see this as a good buy. Definitely not a good um, investment. You know how I feel about that word. And the last point I want to make about this bag is that the leather on it, I feel like, is too nice for that type of construction. So these bags are only a couple of months old at this point, but I get the sense that down the road, if people actually do get the use out of them, I feel like they're, they're, they're gonna scratch a lot. Um, I feel like they're gonna scuff a lot on the bottom. Um, there is no structure to be had whatsoever inside of that bag. So the scuffs are gonna be all throughout it because the fabric, fabric, the material is actually going to collapse onto the ground when it's not being held. So these are all things that I um, talked about in one of my last videos about like design features. There's a reason why I prefer structured bags and I don't go for hobos. It's not just aesthetic. This one, not gonna take too long. I'm gonna say the Chanel Classic Flap. Personally, I'm a bit over this bag. I think that it's lost all of its allure and appeal. But um, about two weeks ago, two, three weeks ago, I guess, uh, they had a price increase and the medium flap, the medium flap, is now 10,200 US dollars plus tax. I don't think that the design of the bag really does enough for it to get all of the hype and the accolades that it does. And therefore the constant price increases and it now being the same price as an Hermes bag, I'm, I'm good. Um, I think that there are so many better options out there. If it is not the most exalted bag in your mind and it's not one that you know you will absolutely love, or if you don't have one already and you got in at an earlier, at a earlier and lower price point, then I feel like there's something better out there for you. Next bag on my list is the Dior Book Tote. Um, I find that the construction on them, I just feel like doesn't really give me like $3,300. So 
first and foremost, it is a big structured tote. They come in three sizes. Um, when you get to the interior of them, there's just nothing. It's not lined in anything. There's no pockets on the inside. When, when designing and actually sketching this bag out, in my opinion, I feel like they did the outside, but when it came to like the actual functional components of it, they went back to bed. There's not a single speck of leather on this bag. It's all fabric. And yes, I do get it. The embroidery is very intricate and you know, I do value that. I do see value in that. But I'm, I'm sorry to say it, but it's like a nothing bag to me. They are wildly popular. I, like, I honestly feel like admission to the beach nowadays requires a Dior book tote uh, here in Miami. That bag does absolutely nothing for me. I think there are so many better options out there. And I'll leave my look for lesson on the Dior book tote, the description box down below. Um, another important crucial point on this is that the shoulder straps are so awkward to me because it's like too short for a shoulder and too long for a top handle and if you get the big size and you actually go to carry the top handle in your hand like down by your side then i mean you have to be my height or taller for it to not actually be dragging the ground um people are afraid of white bags and lighter colored bags for a reason in this bag whatever whatever fabric they use it stains so easily when they come in on the resale market there's a lot of staining on the handles there will be like staining and stuff on the bottoms and just be very careful if this is a bag that you absolutely do love uh try to go for a darker more neutral color you'll thank me later so a lot of the times when they do come into the resale market um they're all stained in the handles um which is a, an entirely separate point but like it's just not functional like something like that you may want to use while traveling try getting those handles underneath a, a, a seat in front of you so the popularity they have now isn't counterbalanced with functionality and i think that in the long run um they're gonna fall by the wayside so uh there are definitely better options better alternatives out there i'll leave some down below next up is a new arrival from louis vuitton they actually have taken inspiration from what um some of us here in the pre-loved luxury community have been doing for years upon years upon years if this is the louis vuitton toiletry pouch on chain uh, this is currently on their website it retails for 1760. this is probably the least expensive bag on this list but i'm sorry like to me and i hope i don't get hate for this but it still looks like a toiletry pouch it still looks like a dock kit what really irks me about it i think is that that's the the zip tab on the side like it looks like it's not supposed to be a bag because it's a toiletry case <laughs> i definitely feel like in the past years since um like etsy sellers and the vintage and pre-love market have um like made this into a thing i feel like the brand itself like did not want to associate with that style uh taking on and i feel like it's just very i don't know it just feels very like inauthentic to them to all of a sudden bundle the two together and now sell it as a bag i don't know i just feel it just seems to me very inconsistent i guess so while i do appreciate at least that the chain does come off on both sides unlike some of the other small leather goods that they've made in the past like other things like that and it is bundled with a toiletry 15 it does belong on this overpriced list but i will say like really no i say no to be very honest i would like for the future to give us less toiletry cases carried as bags. All right, so this is a new uh, a new design from Fendi. I'm really sad to put this on this list because I actually like it. I think it's very cool and the structural, like the hardware design on it is like super interesting and different, which is so my jam. This is the Fendi First Sight Clutch. Is it called a clutch? No, it's called a mini bag and it is absolutely a mini, mini, mini bag. It is $26.50 for that little teeny little thing. It looks like it's maybe like this big. And I'm sorry, $2,600, that's that's real bag money. I hate myself for saying this out loud, but like no more than two and a 19? Like, I feel like this should have a one in front of it. Or maybe my brain just hasn't processed all of the inflation. Um, but I just feel like 2650 is asking a lot on this bag. And, it, that, and I'm super bummed about it because I actually really, really like it. 
I don't like a lot. The next one I want to chat about is the Prada straw bag. Uh, these were super hot last summer and I definitely see them carried around a lot still. It's a straw bag with holes in it. It is literally made of woven straw. I'm pretty sure in some places you can find those for like a dollar. Don't get me wrong, they're very cute. It has the Prada embroidered into the front, but like you can't give this a lining. If I were to put a lip gloss into that bag, it would fall out of it. The bag could not contain my things. If you've been around here a while, then you know that bags for me serve two functions. First function, so hold my things and the second function is to look good. Both of those rules have to be satisfied in order for a bag to begin to be considered worth it or of value. So practicality is everything for me and yeah sure if you're just carrying like a towel or whatever then I guess. Now they do make a larger size that does not have the holes in it um, but once again it is just a floppy straw bag. Like, I will not accept a bag that will not stand up on its own. Full stop, get it out of my face. I don't want it. I, I love raffia. I think it's great for summer. I think it's great for like the tropical climate where I live, but two grand for that? No. Um, I think that the like raffia bags, I feel like should be a little bit more like relax. There's, that's not something I really want to sink a whole bunch of money into. Um, I did get this one last year. This is from Stella McCartney. I bought this at Nordstrom Rack for like around $500 and I just think it's something like super cute, versatile, and different. Um, another brand that I think is doing great and really fun, unique things with Raffia is Chloe. Um, their bags uh, are, I want to say they're like it, like close to a thousand if not like definitely like under about 1500 um, I'll leave some examples here on screen uh, check out the links down below so now we're talking about Bottega I think what I want to start with is the cassette bag um, I'll be honest I hate this bag <laughs> I don't like the design or the style but the price point is I want to say like over 4500 at this point um, I don't think that the style is gonna have like a level of longevity so down the line when it does come to resale the, the money that was put in is not going to come back necessarily like e even even now while they are current while they are still trendy um, on the resale market they don't sell anywhere close to their retail price the price being what it is when also again you factor in that they have other designs and styles that are thousands of dollars less than that so the cassette bag like it is very puffy but like that leather that's puffy on the outside is puffy on the inside too so you have this big puffy bag but you can't fit anything inside of it i feel like it would have been better if the puffs would have just been on the outside or if they would have designed it such that the interior were actually like lined in such a way that the puffs like pushed out more and didn't push into the like in, didn't like didn't intrude into the interior of the bag so you could actually get stuff inside of it because for me if you're going to be all big and floofy then I should at bare minimum be able to put stuff in it and with this one you kind of just can't uh, so now with the large pouch the large pouch is $3,600 and in my opinion it when carried it looks like someone running with a football on their arm and I can't unsee that and now you can't either you're welcome um the leather does scratch over time it's um the corners and the bottoms are going to scuff uh they don't sit really nicely on a surface so that that's going to be another issue of difficulty because again like we we're talking about um, a couple videos ago like it could fall from a height it's not gonna it, it's gonna get scratched on like the full front or back or side um because it's just not really able to just stand up and just stay put so for 3600 I mean that's a lot of money for just a clutch, just a pouch that you're going to have to carry like it's a football. Um, now you are able to fit a ton inside of it, but in my opinion, I just don't feel like it looks very like chic and elegant. And that's, that's just an opinion. So do with that what you will. One alternative Bottega bag that I actually do like, and I never like Bottega. There's one called the point bag. We got it in at work and I just feel like this one just gives, like gives, it has a little bit of pouchiness happening, but it has that triangular ha handle. And I just feel like that makes it, that gives it a little bit of like something. So there's both functionality and style. Also the strap is adjustable, um, it pulls in. It is one that I can appreciate. So if you are going for the Bottega look, look for this one. 
look for this one with a handle. So be sure to check out some of the alternatives that um, I will have linked down below in the description box or the comments. And uh, let me know if there's any other bags out there that you feel like are overpriced. I Some of these I just really don't have high hopes for in the future. Um, I think that once they hit the resale market, their prices are gonna plummet. Um, too, much, too many of them I feel like are all riding on hype and that's not how we like to shop here. So um, with that, I'm gonna leave it here. If you have any suggestions, of videos you would like to see be sure to comment them down below um, you can follow my Instagram because I am back in business um, some of you may know that I got um, temporarily disabled for like a month and that really sucks so I'm glad to be back there be sure to follow if you aren't already and I will see you guys in my next one bye